I didn't think I could take care of my kids. I wasn't capable of being alone. I wasn't capable of being in the car. I just felt the weight of the world. Social media can lead us to believe that others have picture-perfect lives and everything they touch turns into something beautiful. My friend Dion couldn't get out of bed for two weeks before she started her creative business. This is her story. I hope it will inspire you. And if you are struggling, know that there is hope. Welcome to the first episode of my new podcast. I want to share stories with you of my creative friends. I think you will be inspired. However, this is my first attempt, so the internet connection on my end was trash, <laughs> and I look like a ghost. Dion looks great, so please show me some grace. The next one will be better. This is going to be a recurring weekly interview show where we get down to the before and the after of people who have built a creative life for themselves. How long have we known each other? I feel like it's been four years now or five. I'm not so good with the dates. It was four in 2017. Um, I'm pretty good with timelines. So I know it was in um, summer. It was the summer of 2017 when we kind of had a couple of phone calls, you, me, and some with Karen. And uh, so we would have started kind of going back and forth messaging the first part of that year. And there are so many stories to tell about that. Just a brief intro. I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw one of Dion's beautiful pieces of furniture. I see lots of beautiful furniture, but this just stopped me in my tracks to the point where I'm like, oh, I have to know how she did that. And <laughs> I kind of stalked you for a while. I didn't want to reach out to you and be like, show me how you do it. And I read the comments and at that time you weren't teaching. A lot of people were asking you to teach. You just kept politely saying, oh no, I don't do that. So as an artist, I knew that it wouldn't be very polite to have this stranger come out of nowhere and ask for um, a tutorial. <laughs> so I just tried to figure it out on my own and I had I have a couple YouTube videos where I was trying to get your look. It never worked out. Bobby was trying to give me tips and turns out he was right with some of those tips, but I didn't <laughs> want you. Um, and then finally one day you, you went live and you started showing people how you paint. And from my perspective, I was looking at everything you posted. I was just trying to crack the code. Like one day I saw you with a roller in your hand. So then I went and went to Home Depot, bought a roller. I'm like, this has got to be it. And <laughs> then what I would like you to do is tell your end of it, because I was just an observer who didn't know you. A lot has happened in the last four years. Can you tell us what was it like before you started painting and what motivated you to get started? What's the backstory that maybe a lot of people don't realize? Well, okay. So the backstory is this girl doesn't have a college, um, college, uh, degree. Uh, I did two years at a community college before my current employer said, we're going to make you a manager over your supervisor and offer you X amount of dollars. And I was living on my own in an apartment at the time. And so I remember thinking, I'm going to go with the money. So I totally derailed off of becoming an educator. I wanted to be a, ch a young, early childhood educator. I wanted to do kindergarten through third. That's what I thought. But living on my own and decorating my little tiny apartment just did something for me. You know, I knew I had this creative side. I had this instinct to, uh, I knew what colors looked good. I knew how to style things. I knew how to stage things. And that was just something that was really natural to me. Uh, my mother probably was a huge influence on me as well as my aunt. So I rocked along in retail for a long time, Debbie. We started a family. Matt and I have been dating since high school. Matt and I started a family. Um, and I knew when I had Elijah... 20 years ago that I wanted to only work part time and I wanted to kind of figure out a way to stay home with him. And so I tried things, sister, like Arbonne. I sold children's books. I was going to open up a children's bookstore one of these days and I was going to do this. And I told, I sold, I sold all of those multi, -mil the, not multi, what are those called? MLMs? Uh-huh. Yep. That's what I did, girl. I did that like four or five times. It was like, oh goodness, Dion's on to something else, right? The last job, the last retail position I had. I sold high-end clothes like Nicole Miller, Donna Karen, Calvin Klein, and the shoes that were three and four hundred dollars. Some of these bags, handbags I sold were six hundred dollars. And I remember just thinking, 
first off, blown away that people had this kind of money that they could afford this. Um, but I went and I visited one of my friends and she had a new baby and it was 2010, Debbie. And she said, I started an Etsy store and I'm like, what is that? And she said, Etsy, nobody had ever heard of it. People kept calling it Etsy at the time. And so she opened it up on her, on her phone and she showed me that she could do an Etsy store and that she was selling her frames. Girl, she was making frames and putting things on them and they were selling and she was just going to the post office and shipping them. But this was a way for her to stay home with her baby. And by that time, Elijah was three and I think Holden was one or they were four and one, something like that. So girl, I went home that night and I figured out how to open an Etsy store. Now, what are we going to sell? We, I mean, I was crafty at the time, girl. I had no money. We were crafty. I could do those things back then. I knew how to do a sewing machine. So I started making pillowcases. I started sewing curtains. I started putting zippers in pillowcases. I started doing tablecloths. I knew that I loved to go to vintage stores and like thrift stores and junk stores. So I knew I had an eye. I started buying things. And at the time, Debbie, the only thing on Etsy in 2010 that you could sell had to be handmade or vintage. That was the only option. There was no new products. Mm -hmm. So I thought I got this. Started putting stuff on there, teaching myself while we were building a house out in the country, this old farmhouse. Now, this was pre-Joanna Gaines. So I just want y'all to know this. I did subway tile first and then I sent her a message. Good to know. I didn't, I didn't send her a message, but I, at the time I'd never heard of Joanna Gaines, but Matt and I had always dreamed of building a big white farmhouse. And I say big only because we wanted the porch to have just as much square footage as the inside of the house. And it did. It almost did. It had like 2,200 square feet of just porch. So meanwhile, we're living with my mother-in-law for 14 months. I've got two little boys. I'm sleeping on a mattress in my mother-in-law's floor in one of her bedrooms and the kids are in the other room. All of our things are in storage and we're building this house ourselves. So I'm working part-time, Matt's working full-time for another electrical company because at the time he had not started his business. So we are just getting by, but we were two lovebirds trying to raise these crazy boys and we knew um, that we wanted this dream house. So we bought these five acres. We start building this house uh, on the tiniest budget imaginable. So we did most of the work ourselves. I tiled the fireplace. We subway tiled. Matt's mom helped me do so many things. I painted the 20 foot ceilings on scaffolding by myself. Um, so our heart and soul was in this house. His brother designed the plans. His whole entire family helped us. And meanwhile, I'm just trying to make stuff and put it on the Etsy store and thinking I'm just going to blow up and everything's going to sell and I'm going to do this. Meanwhile, I decide to throw papers in the middle of the night for six weeks because I need extra money because I'm building a house. So I'm a newspaper woman at waking up at two, rolling papers, throwing them out my window for about six weeks before I said I can't do this anymore because guess where I had to be at 9 a.m.? I had to be at my real job where I was taking care of two and three year olds for five hours, taking care of other children on top of mine. And I did that, Debbie, so I didn't have to pay tuition for their daycare. So I just worked there and they got to go there for free. And I made a little bit of money. Pretty, pretty sure it was about $750 a month, Debbie. Wow. Yeah. You're working a full-time job. You're rolling newspapers. You're sewing pillow covers and you're building a house mm -hmm. was that overwhelming and frightening like i know when you dive into a big financial commitment like that that's a heavy weight it was terrifying and i think it's one of those things that the lack of knowledge was why i kept going because i didn't even know all of the actual things that could have gone wrong so we got that house built i kept making i was buying dresses and selling them vintage dresses i learned how to use a camera I taught myself how to use a a Canon camera so I could stand on the stair, stair rail and take pictures of myself. And so I put dresses on my side. I was just trying to sell anything. I came up with a turquoise iris because turquoise has been the love color of my life, girl. I have always loved turquoise. Iris is my mother's middle name and my grandmother's middle name. And both of those women taught me that happiness is a choice that you will make. And so I decided as my greatest inspiration, both of those women were create. They were both creatives, makers, and um, they took very good care of their families. So I made the turquoise iris 
thinking I would never tire of that name, and which I have not. It's very personal to me. Rocking along, things happen. I get laid off from my part-time job. I've moved on to another part-time job, the one I mentioned where I was selling shoes. Meanwhile, Matt had just quit his job six months prior. He quit to start his own electrical company because he also felt like his hand was kind of forced. Um, Your house built by this time? Our house was built and we had now lived there for two years. So we're rocking around. I'm trying to run my get this Etsy store growing. Things are selling. I am, t I'm never ever considered myself an artist. So I was taking old clothes that had cool prints, Debbie, cutting them up into strips, wrapping them on canvas and stapling, hanging them on the wall and calling it art. Nice. Oh, yes, I girl. I sold those like crazy. So I was cutting up my old clothes that because I had tons of clothes. And um, then I would take fabrics. I found lots of different fabrics. So I was covering canvas instead of putting paint on it with fabrics and textiles. Then I started doing chairs and I started getting into bigger things. You must have photos of those. I think I've looked for them before and I don't know where they are because I think I've looked for them before Debbie to kind of show that those, those pieces of artwork and I don't have them anymore. I sold most of them to my hairdresser who she no longer has them on her wall, but she bought most of them for their hair salon. I would have to do some research on that. Um, okay. I definitely have the old dresses that I was selling on my Etsy store because you can go through Etsy and see all of your old sales of the, all the things you did. And I look at it every once in a while, I'm like, I sold that? <laughs> but no, the house was built. The boys are getting deeper into baseball and we are getting more and more strung out. You know, we built the house both self-employed or both employed by other people. Now I'm running an online business where the connection is dropping like every day I have to call the phone, the phone company or the, the Wi-Fi service and have them reboot my tower uh -oh. because we have terrible uh, internet service where we are because we're kind of in the country. Mm -hmm. So we're on five acres and all of that to be said, we find ourselves with a seven and 10 year old, an online business, which is the only way I can post and do things is through online. And he's now self-employed, working nonstop, trying to drum up business for himself. And I find myself completely in a tizzy and I kind of have a little bit of a breakdown, Debbie, for about two weeks, I didn't get out of bed. I knew something needed to change. I knew I loved to create. I knew I had something kind of going for me. Um, I had just started kind of painting on furniture and... Wait a minute. You said you didn't get out of bed for two weeks? Yeah. I know that feeling. I know that feeling like there have been mornings where I wake up and there is so much to do that you just want to hide. Is that what you were feeling inside? It's much greater than want to hide. It was... Um, a fear of dying. I didn't think I could take care of my kids. I wasn't capable of being alone. I wasn't capable of being in the car. I asked my mom to come and sit with me every day and she did. Um, I had my brother come by and talk to me and entertain me. I just felt the weight of the world yeah. on me and it was all up to me to fix it. Wasn't real. I have a beautiful partner and spouse who, who has always done anything and loved on me unconditionally. But I still put the weight of the world like this has to be fixed. So I kept trying to figure out, like, what do we do? I was making the mortgage payments. I was making all the payments, but I was still just so strung out from exhaustion. And the boys, that 10 year old was like, hey, mom, I'm really good at this sport. And guess what? I want to be on these travel teams. And if I try out and make it, can I be on it? And then I find out it's like $1,500. It's $700 for uniforms. You got to take off Thursday through Sunday and travel to Dallas. But my God, Debbie, he was good. And he yeah. wanted to do these things. So how am I going to make this work? So that, my friend, is where my inspiration comes from. You've got to make this work. You've got to figure out a way to have greater income than $1,000 a month. That was not sustainable. So I figured out that I had to actually break Matt's heart by telling him this house who we, we felt like it was our baby because we built it from the ground up. It couldn't happen any longer. And by the time I was at that point, two weeks later, he was scared. My kids were scared. My family was scared. What is going on to her? We've taken her to doctors. 
I said, we have to move, babe. We've got to cut, we've got to downsize. We are now self-employed. And if we want to make these businesses work, the Turquoise Cyrus and old school electric company, we got to start over. We got to clear our debt. So because we built so much equity into that house, Matt looked right at me and he goes, whatever we need to do, I'll do it. And we're both, get, don't get me wrong, we're both sobbing. And the kids are looking at the glass like this, like, what's wrong with mom? Is mom okay? Is mom sick? And I'm over here just like, honey, we don't have an option. It's a big task. Fast forward, we sell the house. We make a ton of money off of it. We put a huge down payment on a, a smaller house. It was closer to the school. Um, it was going to work for us. But I loved being creative. I knew I had something going. But I had to start over. I had to start from scratch. I had to go through this hard stuff. I had to humble myself. I had to feel the grief and the tragedy because I felt like we lost our dream in that house. Like that's, we wanted that farmhouse to live there for the rest of our lives. The porch swing, the canopy, ladies and gentlemen, it was all there. Matt planted knockout roses, red ones all around the front of it for me because that's what I dreamt of. It's just stuff. It's just a house, right? So. Hey, I re when I was stalking you, I saw a picture of you on your front porch in that house. And I looked at it and I'm like, not only is this lady got the magic for art and furniture, but look at her life. And I just remember looking at that picture going, is that real? Is that really where she lives? Is that really her house? And it was just a beautiful photograph this beautiful setting and then your work was beautiful. It's so funny how from an outsider's perspective, you think everything is fine and, and, and you must have the ideal picture perfect life. No one really knows what another person is going through and you can have all the things, but if you don't have peace of mind, it's not worth it. I wanna take a quick break to say that Dion and I are teaching a workshop at my store in San Diego next month we would love to see you there. All the information to get tickets are in the links below. And I, I dreamt of sitting on that porch for the rest of my life. And now that we're 12 years or, you know, I, we moved away. I don't remember what year it was. Holden was seven and he's 16 now. So it's been nine years. So I look back now though, Debbie, and we change. We evolve. Like what I want is not a farmhouse on an acreage out in the middle of nowhere. Like, I didn't know I would feel that way. I didn't know I would be here where I am, but I needed to do what we did. And that house was built of love. It was a huge commitment and love between Matt and I to be able to build this because what we, you know, for our children. And I look back now though, and I say, if I hadn't have gone through that, I would still be daydreaming about that beautiful house that we were one day gonna build. And I would still have so much of my attention directed onto that instead of building this business that has hopefully pushed other people and pushed other creatives. And going through that has made me so much more um, compassionate. It's made me understand. It's made me relatable because the depths of my sadness was so severe, it felt like I had lost a human. And I know that that makes me sound superficial. I don't want it to sound that way. It was just something I had dreamt of from a little girl, had it, my husband, and it, it was it was me feeling like I had broken Matt's heart and that, that there was so much pain involved in that. But I look back and I know that time will heal. I know so much goodness came from that. I know that I can look back at that and go, that's where my confidence finally started to grow. I hit my bottom and I started digging myself out. I started praying. I started imagining my anxiety flying up into the sky and disappearing. I started saying, Lord, please take this. I don't need it anymore. It's not a part of me. I've used it. I've abused that anxiety and I just don't need it anymore. I don't need it. And did that anxiety lift once you sold the house? Like how long did it take for you to feel like you didn't want to be in the bed and, you know, that sadness and that overwhelming feeling. Once we made that decision and that commitment, Debbie, 
um, and we were both on the same team. It was sad going through it. And I was dealing with it right then. Matt dealt with it later. He did have to deal with it, but he wasn't dealing with it until later. So I dealt with it as soon as we made the decision and we had a plan. We got it sold. We moved into a house that was smaller. It was newer. It was actually newer than the one we just built, but it was um, it was smaller. It was easier to manage. And my little boy, who's seven years old, he gets on a bike and he goes riding down the sidewalk and he like jumps on the curb and he comes back and he looks at us and he goes, I love being in a neighborhood. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, watch me. Watch how fast I can ride my bike. And he was like going down the street. He had friends that were in the neighborhood. And once we saw that those two boys were happier because they had neighbors and friends and they could walk and they could go to school and they, they were walking to school, Debbie, they were so happy. That was everything. And then Matt dealt with it. And what I just mean is he kept it all internal, but he, he had to slowly work through feeling like he had disappointed everybody that he was, that he had failed his family. Um, and he has where he completely worked through it, but he had to do it in his own time. And I had to be patient while he worked through that. Mm -hmm. After this, how did you get to the point where you started painting furniture? I've scrolled back through your Etsy because when I was stalking you, I did click on your Etsy to see what else you had. And then like a true stalker, I scrolled all the way back. <laughs> and your furniture went from just one solid color, even some mid-century modern, to this beautiful blended drippy look. And we're going to insert some of those pictures so that our viewers totally understand the magnitude of your gorgeous art. I was like, well, what happened? Like what happened from this very basic piece of furniture to what you are doing now? How did you decide and how did you come upon like blending, spraying with water and all of that? So I guess that's always been in me, Debbie, but I get bored really easily. I never like to create the same thing twice. So as a board creative, you just start picking up stuff and start playing. And I can almost remember the exact moment, Debbie, where I grabbed a water bottle because I didn't like what I had done to the piece of furniture and I didn't know how to get rid of it. And I was being lazy and didn't want to sand. So I can almost remember grabbing an old Windex bottle, putting water in it and just spraying it. And there was something delicious that happened when the color started blending and they overlapped. And I remember thinking either people are going to love this or I've totally lost my mind. But you know, when you take old pieces of shelves out of cabinets and you kind of rework a piece of furniture, there would be scrap wood sitting there. And I would just, I would play on it while the piece of furniture was painting because it couldn't do anything else. So I would do, play around. And then I started getting Matt's tools and Matt's putty knife. And I, I kind of made like a, an abstract ship or boat painting on a piece of wood. And my mom walked in one day and she saw it. She goes, wow, I really like your colors that you used there. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, that was a paint from, um, from another paint line. I won't even say who it was, but I was just kind of playing, kind of getting used to the texture before I put it on furniture. And she's like, well, I really kind of like what you did there. And so I thought, hmm, interesting. So Debbie, it was just me getting bored and I don't wait very well. Like I don't just let paint dry. So I have to keep playing and keep moving and, and grabbing things and scrap woods. And, and I, you know, I'd started going, doing lives, but I didn't, at the time I wasn't showing anybody what I was doing with the water and the putty knife, because I thought you would unfollow me. I but thought they I are going to think the girl's gone local because she's spraying water on furniture. <laughs> But you had to know that what you were doing was totally different than anyone else. And I saw that you were getting a huge response. Like when I saw that first piece of furniture, all these comments, all these likes. And I'm like, you know, yeah, everybody likes this. Like, how did that feel to know that you kind of held the key to a secret that people really, really wanted from you? Like, and also you, you've talked about how you struggled, you know, in the beginning, you struggled to be in front of the camera. So what was that like? Well, I can tell you for sure. It didn't feel like at the time that I had any kind of secret sauce. It did. It wasn't something that I consciously said, oh, I've got something here. This is really great. Because of my insecurities, 
I still thought they're going to think I'm crazy. I could end up being the crazy painter rather than the turquoise Cyrus. Like I could end up being this, but there was something in me that drove me to do it because I loved it. I loved creating that look. And so my mom would walk by and go, I don't really get the drips. And Matt would be like, do you need, you need to wipe that. Like it looks messy. And I'm like, I know. So <laughs> it wasn't that I even thought I'm doing something that nobody else is doing because I didn't have time to follow other people. I didn't watch other people. There were very few people doing live videos that were painting furniture. Um, to be honest with you, what did stand out in my head are these these comments, Debbie. Like you say, there were a bunch of nice comments and I must have read them and I must have absorbed it because it must have driven me, propelled me forward. But when I look back at it, this is what I remember. Why are you spraying water on furniture? Why are you using a chippy brush? Are you just sitting in your garage? Oh my gosh, this is so unprofessional. That's what stood out in my head. Yeah. You know how we pick up on those things? So mm-hmm. that's what I had to push through because I'm assuming those positive comments kind of propelled me forward. Like, can you show me that? And I'm like, oh, I can show you. Sure. You really want to know? Or are you making fun of me? <laughs> Woo. You know, so much insecurity and doubt. But again, Debbie, it goes back to... I needed to find a way to generate revenue to heart, to start paying for all of these things that the boys were wanting to do. And Matt was starting to just be completely overworked, tired. He, you know, and I just thought, I told him, I said, give me patience. And I promise you, you've worked so hard for the, for the, our first 20 years. I'm going to take the next 20. I got this, but I'm going to need your help. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to go live. I'm going to do these things that scare the crap out of me because I can't walk in there and tell those boys that I can't provide for them and they can't, they can't try out for those teams or they can't do these things that they're qualified for. They made the team now pay the money. Like I'm going to figure it out. I'll do whatever. So what got you to the point where you press that live button for the first time? I remember that day, my business coach, um, I had joined Jennifer Allwood's coaching. And at the time she was still doing painting and I needed to understand how to work social media to my advantage. Uh, There was no Instagram yet. And so, um, or Instagram maybe had just started, but I needed to figure out social media. I didn't know where else to turn. And I was kind of, Uh, just kind of attracted to her, to her lives and her style. And she flat out said, you guys, if you want to grow your business, this is the number one way to do it. Video is becoming everything. You need to be on video. You need to, need to, need to. So I realized really quickly, my audience, Debbie was on Facebook. So whatever Facebook was doing was where I needed to focus my attention. And she said, you need to do it. So I had a piece all staged and ready, Debbie. And I pushed live, not even sure if that's the right button. I don't know, but <laughs> nothing came out of this mouth. I froze. My pits are sweating. Um, I'm I'm about to hyperventilate. And I just pushed stop and said, well, that didn't work. And then just cried because of my disappointment in myself. And then I just kept trying it every few days after that. The next one was three minutes. And I spoke to the camera and I watched it back and thought, never do that again. Don't ever watch that again but keep going because people were responding to you. And the beauty of social media is you guys propelled me forward by saying that was really cool, Dion. The comments saved me. The comments made me feel like you really wanted to see what I was doing. And I was blindly going into something, but the support that people were so kindly giving back a comment like, wow, I love that color. What are you using? Oh my goodness. And they seemed interested. And there was this spark that lit inside of me. And I realized I love showing people how to do what I'm doing because I wanted to be a teacher. Do you remember that? I wanted to be an educator. You did the first three minute live. And then from there, was it once a week? Was it every day? Was there something inside you that was like, oh yeah, this is happening now? (laughs) Um, No. For the first two years, it was like this. (laughs) You have to do this. 
you have to do this. There was no random. There was no, I mean, it was random. There was nothing planned. There was nothing scheduled. There was nothing da, 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 da. Until Jennifer Allwood said, I'm challenging you guys to a 30 day challenge and the winner gets some sort of something. And I thought I'm at the point where I'm enjoying doing the lives, even though it would take me out, girl, I rewarded myself with the brownie every time I did a live. So every time I would go in and lay on the couch and go, I did it, I'm done. I did the hardest job today. I grew my following, I painted, and now is a brownie, a little bitty brownie. And I would say, I can't do anything else for the rest of the day. That's why I usually started it at night because I knew at the end of the day I was done. She said, do it for 30 days. I realized at the end of the 30 days, um, I had a thing. It was like there was a spark in me and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to people. I enjoyed the community. I enjoyed the interaction. I enjoyed helping. I enjoyed someone coming back and saying, Dion, I tried what you showed me and it worked. And I'm like, what? Like it became a thing and it became, um, it became less lonely, Debbie. I was alone in my garage, busting my tail, trying to create something from the ground up, God willing. He let me do it every day. How did that affect your paint sales and your furniture sales? Where did you see your business go from just getting started to taking off? Like, can you describe some of the things that you did that made Absolutely. your really climb? Absolutely. So about that time that I'm getting familiar with doing live video, the owners of paint companies started contacting me. And they wanted to send me paint. They saw that I had a blog. They wanted me to use their paint. Um, I had this one with dark hair with these glasses that contacted me. And I yeah. said, honey, she's the one on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> when you contacted me, I originally had said, no, I'm okay. You don't need to send me any paint because I had this cabinet full of paint. Um, but I started using it because I, I, you know, you got back with me and then I said, yes, go ahead and send me some colors. And I started playing with it. And you said, I just need you to put your hands in this paint. Like I need you to feel this paint. I think you'll really like it. And so we instantly connected. Um, we had a really strong connection from day one. And um, I loved what you stood for. I loved the quality of the paint. I loved that it was green because at the same time, I was kind of flipping our household products and trying to go more green and be more aware consciously health wise. Um, so it worked out timing perfect. So I wasn't a retailer. I've only sold your paint. So I had to love it enough to actually want to sell it. So, and I did. So I became a retailer for you. Um, <clears throat> I started teaching. All of this started at the same time in the summer and fall of 2017. And I taught at your boot camp in September. And I realized when I got home, there was that spark that was just burning. And I knew that I was good at it and I enjoyed it. And there, were, I'll be darned if I was ever going to stop doing it. So I just kept creating. I started my membership group in August and um, I realized if I could take the scary part and the hard part away and help people get in there and give them a community where we could create together that started taking off the creative connection you started that a month before boot camp mm -hmm. i started august 17th i've continued to stalk you through these four years and i i remember you starting that that membership group and i was like whoa that's that's a huge commitment i would never want to do anything like that but i was i was watching you and i believe i joined it and um or maybe you added me and then I remember you coming back from boot camp and you were just on fire. And that girl is just on fire now. Like I felt like there was something that clicked after boot camp. It seemed like you barely got off the plane and you were live in your group and you were firing people up and encouraging them. And it was so from the heart. I think that year, Debbie, was the year that I described where I had been alive for 40 years but I don't really felt like I started really living until that year. Does you know what I mean? Like the flip flopping, I can be Matt's wife and I can be Marilyn's daughter and I can be uh, Lance's sister and I can be Elijah and Holden's mom. But when did I actually start being Dion and living my own life fully was that year. Um, and 
it hasn't always been easy because daily I still have to work on that confidence, but I don't question what I'm doing when it comes to helping my community and educating and encouraging people to create because I know how creativity and connections with other creatives has got me right here where I am right now talking to you, one of my closest friends. And I have to say that that is, that is something that you taught me. You know, I so desperately wanted to learn how to paint like you and you ended up teaching me so much more than that. As an introvert myself, I would watch you, you know, with your membership group, knew that that wasn't really something that I wanted to go after. I didn't have that burning desire to teach, but then when we would have a workshop together, seeing the impact that you made so much more than just painting furniture and seeing you inspire other women and encourage them and lift them out of that. Many of us have been in that place where we don't want to get out of bed for two weeks. I am on fire for that now. I don't think that I would have ever gotten to that place had I not watched you do it first and show me how it could be done and the importance of community. And this is how we help each other. You know, we all have different gifts and and strengths and I don't right. think I would even really considered going beyond my YouTube channel and, and teaching these workshops and creating environments where I can help other women myself had I not seen how powerful it was you kind of took my hand and led the way and uh -huh. I'm so grateful for that and so inspired by you well I appreciate you saying that Debbie um, I love seeing the growth that has come from you and that that burning and, and that desire. I'm I'm just on this ride with you. I remember me trying to tell you, we need to go live. Will you go live with me? And you would be like, I don't want to go live. <laughs> I hate lives. And I'm like, I know, just like I hate doing edited video, you hate doing live. So um, we balanced each other out. And with that being said, Debbie, I needed you to believe in me the way that you did in 2017. I needed you to reach out to me and be persistent like you are so many times. Um, your persistence has inspired me because you don't give up and you are humble about it. When you feel low, you've maybe not failed, but maybe you're, you're, you're humble in that and you share that as part of your story and your journey. And I needed you to believe in me. Had you not, Maybe somebody else would, but not in the way that you did it, where you believed in me and kept encouraging me and you didn't compete with me. You wanted to lift me up on my own rather than pull me down or knock me off or try to compete with me. You let me do my thing and pushed me along. And for that, I will forever be grateful for you. Oh, thank you. I just want to say that competition usually just comes from fear that's unfounded. And I... You know, we all struggle with feelings of needing to compete and that someone's going to take something from us. But really, it's the, the, the opposite is the truth. And um, I have to remind myself of that sometimes, as I'm sure we all do. But we do. Uh, there's no need to compete if we lift each other up and realize that um, there is enough for everyone. And God has a plan for us all. And we all work together like a puzzle competition isn't necessary yeah absolutely not right so can you describe what your life is like now like there's such a contrast from you know what you described as your before you have so many things going on um can you describe a typical day and all of the things that you that you do in a day, the things that you produce and um, where people can find you and see your work. I still am stalking you and I see you out there doing your thing. And I'm like, holy moly, how does she get it all done? <laughs> well, I have a little bit of help now in the last couple of years, I've been able to expand the Turquoise Cyrus team. And so um, I, since opening that membership group in 2017, I now have three membership groups where I have another one where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, and that is also where my heart lies. So I can get online every single month with one person for an hour, and we strategize. Um, that's called Empowered by Design. So that's like a six-month program. I bring 20 women in every, every six months. Um, and then I have a finger painting group, which who knew that I would love finger painting, Debbie, but I'm obsessed. <laughs>
That was another thing that you encouraged me to do. Really? You did. I did it on painting. And Josie Seifert Paint Pixie Brushes bought my first finger painting, which is a little ironic because I have a line of brushes with Paint Pixie now that are the Turquoise Iris collection. Um, but you said, I think you should do that on a piece of furniture, Dion. And I'm like, I remember that now. But I yes. liked the challenge. So I put these flower bouquets on this piece of furniture and it sold within like two days. It's in Florida now. Um so that just kind of encouraged me. And then I realized what kind of happened was that restart of my brain when I finger painted. So a normal day for me, um, like today, I have back-to-back -back coaching calls. I have to train. I have to teach at three. I have finger painting. This is a finger painting. Um, so I flop from group to group, monthly trainings and tutorials. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I have a podcast that I started after I started the Turkey Cyrus magazine. Um, it's a journal magazine where guess what? All of these creatives who had been so supportive of me over the last few years, I wanted to give them a platform where I could feature their work and highlight their shops and their Facebook pages and their, all the things they're doing. <clears throat> and then I thought, well, every magazine needs a podcast apparently. So the same month I just launched podcasts and teach myself how to do that. Um, which the podcast gives them a voice to tell their story. So if you're featured in the journal, you get to come on the podcast. Uh, meanwhile, I'm still maintaining my Friday night live. I'm in the four year running of going live every Friday night at 830 central time because uh, that's where my community is. And I will never, ever stop doing that. That's where I that's where my heart is. I also go live on Wednesdays and Sunday nights. Same time, 830. I want to connect and grow my community. And so I do workshops, I do retreats now. Um, so you can kind of find me online in all of those avenues. Most days I'm sitting right here and I'm in this room and I'm doing things just like this with fellow creatives that I love and adore and I'm meeting new ones and I'm trying to motivate people and trying to be real and break it down and make sure that everybody that I connect with understands what I see in them the way that you saw me four years ago when I needed you so badly. Okay, we are going to put the links to all of Dion's membership groups and her journal and her website in the description box. Dion also has a YouTube channel that you will not want to miss out on. Dion, I want to wrap this up by saying if you met someone who was in your shoes when you were first getting started, say there's another Dion out there watching right now and and she is wanting to contribute to the family income and follow her dreams. What advice would you give to that girl, that woman? That's a good one, Debbie. I would tell that young lady right now, because I still cry for that, Dion. I still cry for that girl sometimes. Um, I would tell her to make a list right now of everything that scares her. And then I would hold her hand and walk her through each one of those things and do every single thing on that list that scares the crap out of her. And I would guide her and I would remind her that there has never been anyone just like you and that your talents and your gifts are worthy, just like mine. There's nothing special about me other than just seeing a desire and seeing a goal and saying, you know what, that scares the crap out of me. I would rather die than do that. <laughs> and then go do it and keep doing it, keep doing it until it's not so uncomfortable. So my, my line is that you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that is where you really start living your life. So that would be my advice. Make a list right now. Make a list today of the things that scare you and start checking them off, sis. Is there anything on your list that you would rather die than do that you haven't done yet? Um, yes. You want to share it? Um, there are a few things, some business related, a couple of things, um, not business related, but I have every intention of jumping out of an airplane one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically because Michelle did it and if she can do it, I can do it. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, that's for real. Secondly, I want to stand on a stage with thousands and thousands of people. Um, and hopefully something comes out of my mouth. No, no. Um, because it, because it was something I never imagined I could possibly do. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the message would come through clearly, 
but that scares the crap out of me, Debbie. And I have every intention of doing it one of these days. I have no doubt, my friend, no doubt. All <laughs> right. Well, this concludes our very first episode. Be sure you to click it. the link below. Go to the turquoiseiris.com um, and get to know my friend Dion. If you don't already Thank know you. her, I know that you will be glad that you did. Thank okay. you so much, Debbie. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching our first interview. Stay tuned next week for another one. We will be doing these weekly. To find all of Dion's links, check the comment box below. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of my podcast. Click the link below for more information on our next workshop. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.